uh, the reasons why students choose to study in Australia, it's uh, due to a lot of uh, good initiatives that our government have introduced. For example, the 40 hours uh, 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 that, that the student can work every two weeks, and also the two-year post-study work rights. And when I talk about the courses today, I will also focus on the courses that are two years or longer. Yeah, just to make sure that I, because uh, again, a lot of students, I believe when they choose to study in Australia, they want to then stay on for the two years post-study work rights in order to work full time. So a lot of our students do that anyway. So a lot of times we are uh, seeing students coming to Australia for two years studying a master's course and then two years full st working full time or three years doing a bachelor course and then working full time for another two years. So four to five years. Yeah. Uh, this is some of the interesting facts about Australia as well. I think uh, for the last year, it was voted like the 11th most, the 11th happiest country. So that's quite interesting. And also Australia is a very multicultural uh, country. Yeah, especially Sydney and Melbourne, Brisbane, all the main cities. You'll see that students coming from all over or basically people coming from all over the world coming into Australia to work and study. So it's very similar in the Kaplan Business School class as well. Yeah, for example, our uh, uh, classes last year, we have actually students from 85 different countries. So when your students come and study with us, they are studying in a very mixed culture environment, which sometimes is very important for them as well. Okay. Okay, so a little bit on how we are different and I'll also talk a bit more detail about our, so the, the different type of support we, we offer our students. But uh, basically, uh, at KBS, we focus a lot on individual support, okay? For example, our class sizes are quite small. Uh, a business class in, 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 in our courses are generally 25 to 30 students, yeah? So comparing to going into a lecture hall with 100, 200 students, we have a very nurturing environment for our students, yeah? Students get the uh, attention and support from, their staff, from our staff as well as their lecturers, okay? Uh, we are also a very globally recognized provider. Hopefully a lot of you have heard about uh, Kaplan, not necessarily KBS, but also the other Kaplan businesses around the world. Yeah. So uh, rest assured, uh, when you talk to your students about what we offer or what Kaplan offers, uh, you are talking about a uh, uh, institute that is well established around the world and is reputable. Yeah. Uh, one interesting update as well, the recent uh, risk assessment level uh, from immigration, K Kaplan Business School is actually a risk assessment level one institute right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a little bit of how what, who, who Kaplan is as a business uh, uh, overall, worldwide. So every year we actually graduate close to a million students. Yeah, and uh, we have actually 400 different locations in 30 different countries. So coming back to my point earlier, uh, students will get the security knowing that they are coming to a school that is reputable and globally uh, connected and recognized. All right. Okay. Next, we will talk about the, our campus locations. Uh, we have four business schools across Australia. Yeah, uh, we have uh, our most popular schools are Sydney and Melbourne, of course. Uh, most international students come to uh, these two larger cities. We also have Adelaide and Brisbane, which offer a sort of quieter city, quieter study environment. So it really depends where your students want to go, what type of environment they like to study in. Uh, Adelaide has been quite popular. Uh, I think the past few, uh, maybe the past six to eight months, yeah, because in Adelaide students actually currently get three years post-study work rights instead of two. And also Adelaide offers uh, a little bit more flexibility when it comes to the points uh, when they apply for their PR subsequently. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like I said, for international students, a lot of them Southeast Asian students, especially a lot of them still prefer to come to Sydney and Melbourne, which are the two biggest cities. All the campus locations are located in the city center. So uh, that makes it very easy for students to come to school, easy to access to public transport. So uh, very uh, students can get to campus quite easily. All of them are in the uh, CBD in each city. Okay. Uh, not a lot of students do this, but students can easily also transfer between each campus. Yeah, if you look at the top there, uh, that means that your student can study one year in Sydney and just transfer to Adelaide the second year. 
or as long as they are not in the middle of a trimester, they can transfer their campus anytime at no extra cost. Okay, all the subjects and all the courses that I'm going to talk about a little bit later, they will be offered in all four campuses. They all have the same price, they all have the same subjects, everything will be the same. Yeah, so students can easily transfer campus locations uh, if they want to. All right. Ah, yo, okay, so next, the, the next few slides will be a little bit more on uh, each city. And don't worry, I will also give you a version of these slides. So obviously, like I said, Sydney and Melbourne are uh, the most popular and coming down to Mel uh, Brisbane and Adelaide, which are more affordable cities, more quieter study environments, okay? Okay, and uh, next I will be talking about the different support. Yeah, so earlier I talked about individual support, right? So I will talk about three types of main support that we offer at our campus, yeah? Uh, the first one, which I think is quite important, is career support, career center, yeah? So every campus that we have, we have a dedicated career center, okay? We have two career officers in each campus, basically helping students to find internships and work placements. Okay, we know that studying students coming to study business with us, they are, they, it's very important for them to get good marks, to get good grades, pass their exams. But we also understand that the reason they are coming is to hopefully get a good job in the future, learn basically how uh, to uh, get a job to, uh, to secure their future and hopefully also get something or work experience in Australia. So all the courses that we have, we have an internship and work placements included, okay? That means that we will find a suitable company for the student if they want to, it's not compulsory, and we will send them to the internship to get the on-the-job training, all right? One very interesting statistics is that 50% of our students, I think it's the next slide, 50% of our students, yeah, one in two, actually, that do an internship, actually get a job offer from the internship company. Yeah, so it's not only a chance for students to get work experience, but it's a chance for students to show the companies what they can do in order uh, to, 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 to help them secure a job. So a lot of our internship companies, as you can see, we have 100% satisfaction rate in 20, uh, 2018 and 2019. So uh, our host companies, our partnership companies are very happy and therefore a lot of them get hired after that. Okay, but one important thing also, we don't just send students to do internship without teaching them uh, with, uh, or equipping them with different skills as well. For example, we prepare them with their interview, we help them with their resume writing, we help them with their cover letter. We also do different workshops to help students to learn how to network properly in Australia in order to get the connections to do well in their career here in Australia. Yeah. And one, one common question I, I get is that, do the students do the internships after they study? Uh, I think that the, the answer is that yes, they can do it after their studies because this service is for all students and all graduates, yeah? But a lot of our students choose to do it during their studies. Yeah, so students, when they're studying, at the same time, they can do the internship, they can do the work placements. This gives them, when they graduate, this gives them both a uh, Australian degree plus the, the working experience together uh, at the same time, okay? Right, a bit more on internships. And the next service that I was mentioning is our academic success center, yeah? So obviously, careers is important, but like I said, we want students to do well in their classroom as well. So we have different, we have uh, a library in all of our campuses, and all each campus, we also have a, what we call ASC, academic success center. This is to make sure students get the proper support if they are not catching up with their studies in class, okay? For example, your student thinks that oh, I don't, they don't understand the lecture or they don't understand a particular class, they can quickly come and talk to us at, at the library. Yeah? We have, again have two people uh, in the ASC at every time to help students uh, with any academic needs that they, that, 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 that they need help. For, English, for example, English language support, we also teach students how to manage their time, how to do proper academic research. This one I think is quite important. The Harvard referencing that we use in Australia, we teach them how to do that, uh, use Harvard referencing when uh, paraphrasing when they do their assignments. We also basically help them to 
when they are doing assignments, help them to brainstorm ideas. We can read their assignment to make sure that they don't do anything uh, format error or stuff like that. When uh, and that will cause them unnecessary uh, marks loss. Yeah, so. Academic Success Center helps our students in any aspect that they need uh, that, it, that is involving their classroom, okay? Uh, we also have extra tutors, yeah? We actually get our uh, ex-students to come back and tutor our current students, uh, mostly in accounting and finance subjects where students get uh, most difficulty there. So again, uh, we, we have our ASC located whenever campus is open to help students get through their assignments, get through their studies, okay? And the last support I want to talk about is student experience, okay? I think this is also sometimes students don't think about it, but also very important because when students come to Australia, a lot of time it's their first time coming to Australia. They don't know where to, I don't know, buy a transport ticket. They don't know how to open a bank account. They don't know how to enroll in their subjects. So our student experience officers are seated uh, in front of campus. So when they come into campus, that's the first person they see. And basically we help them with anything, any questions they may have, everything related to campus life. Okay, so we will teach them obviously how to enroll in their subjects on the first day. Uh, we will teach them uh, and we will run different activities and workshops to get them to socialize with their students and their classmates. So it's very important for students to, when, when you have students to come and talk, uh, if they need help to come to talk to our student experience officers to make sure that they're adjusting into life uh, within Australia. Okay, so those are the main three services that we have. Uh, our business schools, we also go by a trimester. Yeah, so every year we have three intakes that the student can join us in. Okay, we have March, we have July, and we have November. So trimester one, trimester two and trimester three okay so March one obviously ju we just finished our next one is July and our following one is November so uh, students can start any trimester they want to each trimester is about four months so typically a student will do either three or two subjects per trimester okay so one common question I always get is that trimester one and trimester two is uh, normally compulsory, but can students take trimester three as a holiday? Okay, they want to take a break, they want to go back during Christmas, visit their family, uh, spend, time, spend New Year's with, with their friends and families. Yes, they can, okay? But students must take all their subjects in trimester one and two in order to take trimester three off as a holiday. For example, students need to complete eight subjects a, uh, a year, right? Normally students do three in March, three in July, two in November. But if they want to take November as a holiday, they do four in uh, March, four in July, and then they can take November off as holiday. Okay? All right. So uh, I will move on to our courses. Yeah. Uh, what we teach at Kaplan Business School are both undergraduate and postgraduate. Yeah. So bachelor degrees and master degrees. All right. Our undergraduate course, obviously, the most popular with uh, us is with our bachelor degrees uh, in of, of business. Yeah, we do have a diploma of business, but the diploma of business is basically the first year of the bachelor. Okay, so that means that if your st students study a one year diploma with us, they go into the second year of our bachelor degree if they continue with us. Okay, so what first year diploma is same as first year bachelor degree. So one plus two. Okay, so even if they package a diploma and bachelor, it's also three years. If they go directly into the bachelor, it's also three years. The main reason a student would do a diploma first is if their IELTS is 5.5, their English level is not quite as high. Okay, diploma of business 5.5 IELTS, bachelor of business to get in is 6.0 IELTS. So that would be the main difference. Okay, and if with our bachelor degree, we have uh, a bachelor of business general, we have accounting, hospitality and tourism management, we have management and marketing. Okay, I think it's worth mentioning that the accounting, all accounting courses at Captain Business School, we are all accredited by CPA, CA and ACCA. Okay, accredited by all three. This uh, applies the same thing to our uh, Masters of Accounting as well. All right. Okay, so a diploma of business, like I said, one year only, eight subjects. It's not a vocational diploma, just remember, it's a, 
uh, higher education diploma. So it's similar to a lot of other universities uh, uh, year one, which is a higher ed diploma. Okay, so the eight subjects they finish in one year. So like I said, three subjects in uh, March and July, and then two subjects in November. Uh, that will take them eight, uh, one year to finish eight subjects. Okay, and the bachelor degree would be the eight subjects in year one, eight subjects in year two, year three, eight subjects, 24 subjects for the entire year. Uh, the students will do different electives depending on what major they go for. For example, accounting students will take accounting electives. Yeah, uh, Marketing students will take marketing electives. Management will do management. Hospitality will do hospitality electives. So year two and three is where students uh, do different electives depending on what major their bachelor degree uh, is on. Okay. All right. And next we move to our postgraduate uh, uh, postgraduate master degrees. You can see that we have quite a lot. We have master degrees, we have graduate certificate, we have uh, graduate diplomas. But what I will focus on, because earlier I mentioned about post-study work rights and 95% of our students want to apply for post-study work rights, right? So we, I will focus on all the courses that are two years, uh, minimum two years, okay? Because that I think most of your students are after that. So, uh, the, very, the popular ones with us are the Masters of Accounting, Masters of Professional Accounting, both of these. Uh, Masters of Business Analytics, our newest one. Yeah, I will focus on this one, the extension, because the extension is two years. The Masters of Business Analytics is only one year and eight months. The Masters of uh, Business Analytics extension is two years. And I also focus on this one here, the MBA, Masters of Business Administration. Uh, which is our most popular, actually our currently our most popular course now in uh, KBS. All right. And like I said, the uh, accreditation from CPA, CA and ACCA is also uh, applicable to our master's course. Okay. All right. So we have two types of masters of accounting, masters of accounting and masters of professional accounting. The more popular one is this one here, the masters of accounting, because like I said, it's the two year course. All right, so that will, that will enable students to get a, uh, uh, the post-study work rights, whereas the Masters of Professional Accounting, as you can see, is only one year and four months, yeah? But it's our fastest way for students to get a Masters in uh, Accounting, right? So if your student doesn't want to apply for post-study work right, apply for this one, the MPA. If they want or interested to apply for a post-study work right after that, I will encourage them to do the Masters of Accounting, which is the two-year option. Okay, so 16 subjects, that means eight subjects per year uh, and two years, obviously, they finish the 16. And again, uh, similar to all our master's courses, the internship is included. Okay, and like I said, this is our newer co newest course, the Masters of Business Analytics. Yeah, uh, it is, we just started in March, so we've been teaching the course for about a few months, a few weeks now. Uh, it has been very popular, especially for students coming from uh, accounting background, students coming from IT or other business background. Because just remember, uh, we are teaching a business analytics course, not a data science, data analytics course. All right. So it will very much still be focused on the business context of uh, analytics. All right. What I mean by that is that it won't be a very uh, hardcore programming or mathematics course, all right? It will be a course that focuses on what type of data the students can collect, yeah, in order to make business decisions. That means they will learn how to extract uh, important data, how to spot business trends, how to look at uh, different uh, aspects in, in, in between analytics. And then they will also learn how to develop a marketing plan, develop a strategic plan how to use this data to make important business decisions, okay? So like I said, it's not a very focused on mathematics type of course, programming type of course. You have, you learn, students learn a little bit on that, but the focus is more towards analytics in a very business context, okay? Maybe what I'll do, I'll stop the presentation here for a little while, and we will quickly look at a YouTube uh, video to explain what business analytics is, okay? Uh, I, what I'll do is I'll stop share and then I will do this, share the audio 
Okay. Business analytics is often misunderstood. I will very briefly explain what it means, why businesses need experts in this field, and what potential jobs are out there. When it comes to business analytics, data scientists or statisticians try to find meaning in the data. And IT professionals, on the other hand, will build the infrastructure in order that you can retrieve or store the data. Whereas in business analytics, we use this data to make strategic business decisions with the aim to impact the company's bottom line. For example, a business analytics practitioner will notice that certain products are purchased on certain weekends and will ask why those products and why then? Can we sell similar products on those weekends? Our primary motivation is to understand how the data can be useful for business to gain competitive advantage. In the next five to six years, we'll have an additional one billion people online, bringing the total up to six billion people globally. These people's lives will be conducted to a large extent in the digital realm. Businesses will have no option but to engage with the digital world, to deal with the flood of digital data and make it part of their operation. Businesses will therefore need graduates with a business mindset who understand the data, understand business, and are able to communicate the usefulness of that data to their corporate leaders. Let's talk about three broad categories of jobs in business analytics, all centered around understanding customer behavior. The first one is as a marketing analyst, perhaps trying to understand which groups of people are likely to buy which products. For example, if you're a media company streaming sports, viewers of different sports will probably buy different products, but we need to forecast which products. Another big area of data will be in government, who need to understand the flow of resources, the requirement of transport infrastructure, and match that to the needs of the public and industry especially in those countries growing rapidly. Finally, financial services are becoming globally interconnected and there is a huge need to understand transactional data, the movement of money and assets, and the growing number of global regulatory requirements. Digital data is going to be the main way we understand people's behavior. So we need a base level of understanding of what tools business analytics can provide to business. However, these techniques are useless if a graduate doesn't understand how a business works, what their needs are, and how different parts of a business interact. Finally, to bring that together, graduates need soft skills to communicate data insights and to influence and encourage businesses to take the huge opportunities that business analytics provides. The Master of Business Analytics at Kaplan Business School gives you all three of these perspectives. An understanding of business analytics tools in a supported example-based format without overemphasizing the technical. That will be taken care of by data scientists. A background to business disciplines like marketing and finance and the opportunity to develop creativity and soft skills so that the student can speak to both the business and the data scientist and create real value through data initiatives. Okay, yeah, so as you can see, John, uh, the person that was speaking there is one of our, our head lecturers for business analytics. You can see that what he focused on is saying that it's, 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 uh, it's really useful, this course is really useful for students that are looking to be a business or marketing analysts in the future, they want to go into management consulting, that, that, that that kind of uh, job or that kind of role. I think uh, I get a lot of students, we actually got a lot of students from uh, other business background or IT background uh, quite recently showing interest in analytics because it is one of the fastest growing job opportunities around the world right now. Uh, basically, uh, long story short is to help students understand how to spot trends, how to think about uh, the, the, the future business trends and how to use data to make key business decisions. Okay, so this is an interesting one that we decided to offer in a master's level because I think a lot of students that have done their first degree in business, they uh, and, and, and this, this will, will, will be really suitable for them because it offers them something different compared to what they studied before. Okay. And last but not least, like I said, the most popular course currently in all four of our campuses 
is our MBA. Yeah, our MBA has been a very, very successful course because it is quite unique. Uh, we have uh, seven different specializations in our MBA. Uh, we don't think that a lot of other schools or institutes have that many specialization. Normally, when a student do an MBA, it's just a generic general MBA. Yeah, but with our MBA, students can actually choose from seven specializations that I'll show you. But first, a little bit more, a little bit on the details of the MBA. It's a two-year course, yeah, uh, with only 12 subjects, okay? That means that one year, students only do six subjects, which means that each trimester, they only do two subjects, all right? So that only, by only doing two subjects, that gives your students a lot of flexibility, when they come to study with us. What I mean by that is two subjects means six hours a week. All right. So that means students can actually arrange their class in a week to come to school only one or two times. All right. The other free time students can obviously use that to uh, do part, their part time work, do the internship with us, get some job experience, because we understand that a lot of postgraduate students, especially MBA students, have other work commitments, for example. Okay. So the specializations that we have for our MBA are these seven of them, okay? We have Women in Leadership. We are the first sort of private institute to offer Women in Leadership. Uh, we have Tourism and Hospitality Leadership, Health Management, Health Services Management, sorry, Project Management, Digital Management, Entrepreneurship, and International Leadership, all right? Out of these seven specializations, students can actually pick two specializations. So when they graduate from our MBA, they will get an MBA that, says Masters of Business Administration specializing in hospitality and tourism leadership and entrepreneurship, for example. Yeah, so it will add value to their degree as well by having a specialization when they look for something that is uh, sort of related to that industry, okay? So for example, by having specializations, we also attract students from a lot of different type of areas, not only business students. Okay, for example, project management. We get a lot of students from IT and uh, pro, uh, engineering background because a lot of the jobs that they do are project, uh, are project based. Okay, so when students already study engineering, right, for example, or they've been working as an engineer for the past five years, how they want to take the next step in their career is to study something that is different. All right, an MBA will give them the business skills, the leadership skills, the strategic thinking kind of skills. And obviously focusing on project management, they will give them also project management skills, uh, which complement uh, their engineering degree very well. All right, obviously that is only one example. Health services management, for example, is very suitable for uh, nursing students, aged care students, uh, maybe even childcare students. If they want to take their, their career to the next level, they need to learn how to manage stuff. They need to know how to use uh, healthcare systems. Uh, maybe help, help, they, they also need to do a little bit of uh, logistics in order to run a clinic, to run, to run a health facility, uh, facility, for example. So all these different specializations can also relate to diff students from different uh, uh, academic or uh, employment background uh, to complement the skills that they already have, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and maybe I should mention this as well. In all our master's courses, it's a very practical type of uh, studies. That means that uh, in business analytics, in MBA, uh, we don't have exams, for example. All the subjects that the student do, they will have practical assessments. That means that students will get marks based on their assignments, their group assignments, their presentations, okay? This means that students won't just study uh, and memorize their, their, their textbook in order to just pass an exam, okay? They will have no exam throughout their two years. They will only have practical assessments, all right? So it's a very, very practical course. For example, with the class that we run, don't have lecture and tutorials. We only have a workshop classes. That means that the lecturer will talk for maybe five to 10 minutes, yeah? And then the lecture will stop and then students will have discussions with their lecturers as well as their uh, classmates, okay? They will have discussions, they will have an activity, they will have brainstorming session to exchange ideas, uh, debate opinions, okay? And this is very important because again, in master's level, a lot of the learning comes from learning from each other, not only learning from the textbook. So. 
uh, when students do our master's courses, they are coming into a class that is very practical, very focused on workshop classes and practical assessments. Okay. Okay. So these are the entry requirements. Again, I will provide you this slide. So you, yeah, uh, and these are also on our website. Uh, it's quite easy to remember. I think uh, all of our courses, accounting and business, all of our IELTS requirement is 6.0, okay? Uh, speaking and listening, sorry, speaking and uh, writing must be six, yeah? Except for our diploma of business, which is IELTS 5.5, okay? If, the, if your student wants to come and study a bachelor degree with us, they need to finish a high school, uh, their, their high school back in their home country, okay? Uh, if they want to do a master's with us, they need to finish minimum a bachelor degree in their home country. Uh, no work requirement is required. All right. And the same with the Masters of Accounting. IELTS requirement six uh, for a uh, master's degree, they need to have a bachelor degree in their home country. All right. And uh, here is some of our other requirements. I think uh, I will just point out to this area here, which is the normally the most important one, which are which is our scholarships. Yeah, uh, our scholarships. We have two main ones for our Southeast Asian students. Yeah, the first one is our regional scholarship, which is the most uh, common one here. This one, the first one here, regional scholarship is the scholarship for our Asian students, which is ten percent scholarship. It's very easy to get. Students just need to complete a 65% uh, grade in their previous studies in order to get this scholarship, okay? The second one here is our High Achievers Scholarship, which is a 30% scholarship for students that get a 90% in their previous studies, okay? Our scholarships are all applied during the application stage, so not after they start, but before they start, okay? And, uh, this one here is also for our exclusively only for our Indonesian students. If they are applying for our package course, that means that if they need to study English before they start with us, they actually get 10 weeks free English. Okay, uh, uh, just, rem just remember it's only for our Indonesian offshore students. So if they uh, are studying a master's or bachelor degree with us, they can uh, have the 10 weeks free EAP, which is English for academic purposes that we teach at Kaplan English. Yeah, our sister company is Kaplan English and we uh, basically offer uh, every campus that we have a Kaplan Business School, we also have a Kaplan English campus as well that we teach them uh, general English as well as EAP. So EAP is English for academic purposes, which is uh, basically helping students to uh, prepare for their studies for higher education. All right, so with the scholarships, they can uh, easily be found on our website here by clicking this link. Uh, maybe a bit later, I'll also show you how to use our website to download the forms uh, and obviously uh, all the applications and scholarship applications you can apply through Yes Education uh, once you prepare all the forms, okay? Uh, Industry accreditation, this, this, I think this, this, this one I, I mentioned earlier, uh, all, obviously all our course are TEXA accredited and all our masters, uh, all our accounting courses are also accredited by all ACCA, CAs, and CPA Australia. And uh, these are just to show some of our employment or industry partners. Okay, earlier I talked about a lot about scholarships, and not scholarships, internships and work placements that we do in all of our courses, right? So one common question is who are our, our partners? These are some of our popular ones. Yeah, obviously PWCEY. We work with them with our accounting students. We work with the Marriott Novotels, the Hilton Hotels, with our hospitality students. We also do a lot with management and accounting, uh, ma management and marketing students with the city of Brisbane, city of Sydney, the, some of our government institutes as well. Uh, I think overall we have about 90 to 95 uh, close to 100 sort of indus different industry partners. So it really depends where, what type of industry experience our students are looking for. We will sit down with your student. We will talk to them what they want to do in the future, what they've done in the past to basically work out the most suitable uh, type of internship, the most suitable type of industry placement for them. So it's always very tailored to them as well. 
Yeah, we basically customize for all of our students. Yeah, why uh, young professional women Australia? We also work with them a lot of with our, our women uh, in leadership uh, MBA specialization. So a, with our industry partners, they range from non-profit organizations to multinational organizations and some small to medium type of companies as well. Yeah, like I said, the most important is to find the most suitable type of uh, work placements or internship for your students instead of just sending them to any deep uh, company, okay? All right, so I think uh, I'll focus here on the international student one. Again, uh, these are some, I think, very standard when, when students apply, they need a copy of their passport, they need to, uh, 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 a, a copy of their sort of uh, high school certificates, uh, bachelor degree certificates, English uh, proficiency, uh, and all of them, all, when, once you get all these forms, obviously pass it on to the YES Education Admissions team and they will work with our admissions team to work out the admissions process. Okay, uh, one, I think, uh, development or good news is that uh, we now offer for Southeast Asia students uh, uh, English placement tests. When just now we talk about IELTS requirement, right? IELTS requirement, we talk about uh, uh, the IELTS or PTE requirement, but obviously now with the current situation, it might be a little bit hard for students to access an, an IELTS test. So what we have at Kaplan Business School is what we call a kite test. It's our own online English placement test. It's available for all your students to basically do the test and that test will determine whether they meet the entry requirements for our courses. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very easy, uh, easy test to get access to uh, I'm not saying it's easy to pass, but easy access. So that test will have four modules as well. They will test their reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Okay. We will send the student a login. Okay. The student uh, has seven days to complete the test. Yeah. But when the student is doing the test, make sure that they have a micro, uh, they have a microphone as well as a headset, because like I said, speaking and listening will also be tested. Okay, so it's a very easy students don't uh, can can even do the test uh, in their homes. Okay, they don't need to come into your office to do the test. They can do their tests in the comfort of their home. And we will it normally takes three to five days for us to mark the test and get back to you uh, to tell you what type of uh, what, what, what type of English level your student is at. All right. Uh, before we move into questions. Uh, I would also maybe want to address uh, one of the most common glaring issue now because we talk about studying in Sydney, in Melbourne, but currently what's happening around the world is obviously we have a pandemic, right? And uh, the good news is that we've been teaching online uh, for seven years, Kaplan Business School. Right, so all of our classes right now, we just had our March intake that we just finished. All the students that started with us, all their classes have been moved online. Okay, so moving online for us, it wasn't a very uh, easy process, but we've done it in relatively short time. Okay, uh, it was a very uh, interesting pro uh, process as well, because even though we've been teaching online, uh, we just want to remind you and your students that moving our course online doesn't mean that your students are self-studying okay moving online just means that we want we still want to have the workshop classes we still want to have the interactive classes just on the online platform because of the current situation okay for example online doesn't mean that students just listen to a recording of their lecture and uh, do their assessments and that's it. They are still expected to log in at three o'clock, for example, for their class, li uh, listen together with their lecturer, uh, raise their hands to ask questions. Uh, in Zoom meetings nowadays, you can still split, split students to small groups, do an activity with them. So it's still as much as we can, I know it's different, but as much as we can, we are still trying to emulate a uh, face-to-face class. Okay, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't mean students are self-studying, it's just that we are doing online classes, but we still want to maintain uh, the, 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 the sort of services, the sort of interactive classroom that we have. So because our class sizes earlier I mentioned as well are still quite small, yeah, 
our students will have the opportunity, even they're doing online. Yeah. So for example, now we have a Zoom meeting of 41 participants I can see here. Uh, similar to a class, they will have 25, 30, and then students will have the opportunity to ask questions, do the discussions, split into groups, do the activities, as though they are in a face-to-face -face class. Okay, so uh, for July, which is our next intake, and even for November, we are committing to delivering online as well. Okay, so if the situation or the travel ban or the situation hasn't improved by July, what we can now do is still promote that for July, if your students want to enroll with us, they can. Okay, they can apply, they can enroll, applications are still open for July and November. I, I, I think I would imagine most of the students from your countries, even if they're staying in your home country, they are staying at home, right? They, have, they won't have uh, maybe limited uh, type of work they can do at, at home. So a lot of students that we are in March, for example, with us, they are studying in their home country. Okay, when the travel ban is lifted, they can come to Australia with their student visa and study with us face to face like normal. Okay, I think uh, uh, like, like I said, uh, moving online doesn't mean that is the everything, all the, all, all, everything is just exclusively online. Uh, if your students start in July, for, for example, uh, let's say halfway through the trimester in September, when the travel ban is lifted, they can actually come to Australia and continue their class face to face. Okay, so we are tr being very flexible in that area uh, and uh, I just want to give you the assurance that you can uh, promote the, uh, for us, uh, to, for students to apply in July, to apply for November and if they can't come to Australia, physically can't come to Australia, they can still enroll in their subjects online, they can still uh, uh, study online and they can even still access the services that we have online. Okay, what I'll do is I'll quickly pay, play a video that we prepared for our students, our current students last week. Okay, uh, this is what our Kaplan team are doing for our students and this will give you a bit more explanation of what we are doing uh, at Kaplan Business School. Okay, uh, main reason is that we want to uh, give students some assurance that uh, the classes are still going on and give you as agents that you can still continue sort of promoting us, uh, selling our courses, uh, albeit uh, if July nothing else changes, they can still, it, still do it online. Okay, so uh, I will play this video and then we will move to some question and answers and uh, hopefully you've written down some questions for me and uh, I'm happy to answer them, okay? So let's just start the video now. Hi, it's James Adonopoulos here, the academic dean of Kaplan Business School, recording this message from my home, where, like you, I'm doing my best to comply with the government's social distancing guidelines. The purpose of this video, though, is to talk about you, because we know you've been affected by the implications of coronavirus. And so our objective is to do our best to help you as the consequences of this pandemic continue to unfold. That's why we acted so quickly to transfer all of our on-campus classes to online teaching from the beginning of this trimester so that your studies weren't disrupted after they had begun. This shift to online teaching hasn't even saved Kaplan one dollar. In fact, the opposite. We're actually running more subjects and more classes with more staff than we ever have before. That's because we wanted to make sure that as online students, you do not miss out on any type of support service you would have received had you otherwise been studying on campus. So even though this has been a costly exercise for us, we know it's been even costlier for you. And I'm not talking only about money, despite being fully aware a majority of you have either lost your jobs or had your working hours reduced. The costs you've incurred have also been non-monetary in terms of the stress you're now facing across many different aspects of your life. Which is why we ran a survey at the end of the first week of this trimester, which isn't something we've ever done before, but felt it critical to do to find out from you precisely what your initial experiences have been 
and to identify ways we could make those experiences better. So thank you to those of you who completed the survey and for being so open and honest with your feedback. We've now reviewed your comments in detail, more than 2,000 of them, which enabled us to identify the five greatest themes and how we could improve. The first theme is obvious, money. But with the reasons mentioned earlier, some of you are clearly undergoing heightened levels of financial distress. In response, our executive team has been preparing a number of measures to ease the financial burden you're experiencing. One of these is a cut to our salaries, which each of us is making, with the savings to be put entirely towards a KBS Student Hardship Fund to help those of you who are most in need. We're confident these measures, when we announce them in full later this month, will alleviate some of the pressures you've been facing. The second theme is in relation to our library service. Obviously, our on-campus libraries are closed, but so too are public libraries, which means you've been unable to access the textbooks you require. You will no longer need them because we'll be replacing all prescribed texts with other material for you to access for free. In some cases, it'll be a PDF of a textbook chapter. In other cases, it'll be alternative sources, such as the Harvard Business School collection, to which we've now become subscribers, which means you can now access more than 600 newly published eBooks via our online library. The third is that you're nervous about your grades. Many of you prefer to study on campus rather than online, but please do not be nervous. For years now, our online students have achieved pass rates that have been higher than their peers studying on campus, and that's every trimester. Likewise, our online students have satisfaction levels that are higher, not just a little higher, but much higher than their peers studying on campus. Again, that's every trimester. So you really can relax about your performance and not just because of those statistics, but also because for this trimester, if you submit every assessment in a particular subject, but still end up failing with a final mark between 30% and 49%, we will not let you fail. We'll instead give you two options to choose from. One will be a supplementary assessment that will give you an opportunity to score a pass. The other will be a withdrawn, not fail grade, otherwise referred to as WNF. WNF means your GPA will not be affected at all and your transcript will not show that you have failed. But if the subject happens to be core in your course, you will of course have to reattempt it in a future trimester. And the reason we're doing this is because we know the stresses your confronting in your personal life can impact your studies. Even though the quality of Kaplan's online teaching is seriously one of the strongest in the entire higher education sector in Australia. The fourth theme is your concern about the way your assessments will be held in an online environment. To help you gain clarity, we'll be running a bonus webinar for the three biggest assessments in every subject. If you can't attend the webinar live, that's okay. We'll record it and post it as a subject announcement for you to view whenever it's most convenient for you. The purpose of these webinars will be to clarify the assessment expectations and to answer absolutely any questions you have so that you're capable of not just attaining a pass grade, but something even greater if that's what you desire. The fifth theme is in relation to communication. Specifically, the way it's been confusing to figure out your class times, the links to live webinars, the links to recordings, and so on. For that reason, we'll be posting two documents for you by the end of this week to clear everything up. One will be a diagram that will illustrate the easiest way you can access our support services because you still have access, either online or over the phone, to our Academic Success Centre Learning Advisors we can provide you with one-on-one -on -one coaching on your assessments. You have access to our student counsellors who can help you with any personal issue you're struggling with. Access to our tutors who can assist you to better understand theories and concepts. Access to our career advisors who can help you become more employable. And of course, access to our student experience officers who can assist you in dozens of other ways. 
The second document will contain answers to more than 20 of the most common problems you've told us about in the survey. This will give you a one-stop guide to consult whenever you encounter a majority of the obstacle or challenges you've encountered in your first couple of weeks online. I speak on behalf of the entire KBS team when I say we sincerely hope these strategies make a significant difference to your online learning experience. As we do every trimester, we'll repeat feedback week in week nine, during which our standard survey and student forums will be held so we can find out whether we've been successful with these latest initiatives. In the meantime, if you encounter any other challenges or obstacles, please reach out directly to one of your lecturers or a member of the student experience team so we can support you in whatever way we can in the weeks and months ahead. Our genuine objective is to look after your health and safety and to make sure your pass rates and satisfaction levels are as high as they can be. Thank you very much for the dedication you're showing to your studies. All right, I think this is the end of presentation, is it, Young? Ah, uh, yes, yes. yes so, okay, sure. Yeah, I think, uh, yep. yeah, just want to just quickly uh, reiterate what James in that video, which is our academic dean, uh, I think like, like, like I was mentioning, uh, online books that we've uh, uh, made available for all our online students, obviously, and the services as well, like uh, online consultations with ASC, with our library people, uh, with our careers people and our student experience officers are also still available. And I think uh, the other thing that's important, sometimes students say, oh, I don't know how to study online. It's, it's, it's not something I've done before. We also have some leniency in marking them, like, like James mentioned, like we will not fail any students that have put in effort but didn't pass the assessment. We will have more supplementary assessments. We have an opportunity for them to basically uh, uh, have a second chance if they do fail some of their subjects. So basically, try to put in as much measures uh, as possible to make the situation as close as possible to sort of a face to face class. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, I see that we have questions. So Johnny yep. will help me. Sure. Yeah. I, yeah, thanks a lot, Young, for the uh, fantastic presentation. So I will read out all the questions. So if you guys have any question, please put your question in the chat box. So we'll, I'm going to read it out. So I think the first question we get it from Bimla. How about the fee structure for all the available courses? Okay, yeah. I think we, yep, yep, yep. That's a very important, one important one that uh, I will show you right now. I'll quickly share my screen. The screen, share. Okay, hopefully you can see my screen. I can't see it now. Uh, all right, so with, this is our website. I'll just refer to our website, probably the quickest way to do it. International. Okay, so these are all the fees uh, for all our courses. Yeah, uh, earlier I talked about scholarships. So 10%, 30% scholarships uh, are applicable for the entire course. Again, uh, some of the questions I get is normally is the scholarship for the year one, year two, or the whole thing? The answer is the whole thing. Once the students get the scholarship, it's for the whole course and they won't lose it, so to speak. Okay, so our bachelor, a bachelor degree uh, with us is normally about 54,000. This is for the entire three years. Yeah, uh, annually it's about 18,000 and per subject is 2250. Okay, the reason we put the per subject fees there is to uh, enable students, obviously they only, only pay for the trimester. So like I said, if they do two subjects, they pay two subjects. If they do three subjects, they pay three subjects. Okay, with our master's courses, uh, Masters of Accounting, Analytics, and uh, MBA have slightly different pricing. So for example, Masters of Business Analytics Extension, this is a two-year course. For two years, it will be 42,700. Yeah, again, 2,700 per subject. Uh, Masters of Business Administration, the MBA, is a bit uh, more, 45,600 with 3,800 per subject. But just remember, uh, it's per subject, it's, it costs more, but 
the entire course only has 12 subjects, okay? Uh, and Masters of Accounting, the two-year one is 43,200. Per subject is 2,700, similar to the analytics course, okay? So one year, you're looking about 20, a little bit higher than 20,000 for our master's course and a little bit lower uh, than 20,000 for uh, our bachelor courses. And like I said, once you get the scholarship, you apply the percentage to uh, these course fees. Okay, thanks, Yo. So just for your information, um, all the marketing material, tuition fee, scholarship information is all stored in the Kaplan's Business School website. It's very handy and it's very useful and easy to access. So if you can just go to uh, kbs.edu.au and there's uh, agent resources on, on top of the tab. So you can click that one and then you can download all of the information yeah. uh, required there. So it's, it's actually very useful. So I always use this uh, website to send all the information to my uh, 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 agent partners. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's very, very useful. Yeah, okay. so hopefully this is one of our new websites as well. I think we just had this for three months yeah. and we try to make it easy, obviously, students and then agents. So agent resources, like Johnny mentioned, you have your brochure, course information, uh, the scholarships, course fees, the videos. Videos are quite useful sometimes when you talk to students. You can easily show them a video about business analytics. For example, this video I showed. Uh, we have a YouTube channel that is quite comprehensive. We have all these videos about different specialization, postgraduate, undergraduate, student testimonials, uh, and the agent resources obviously will point you there, and uh, the brochure and everything like that, and uh, specific course information package as well. Great. Yeah, mm. sure. We we'll go to the next question, uh, Yong. So, they ask you about the, I think this question from Hannah, the placement test is offered for onshore and offshore student. So, yeah. Yes, the short answer is yes, onshore, offshore. Uh, when you apply, uh, just say that the student has no IELTS, no PTE, no TOEFL. Uh, they would like to sit for a play English placement test. And when we are assessing the offer, we will also send the login directly to the student. Just remember, right, uh, we will send it directly to the student, not to the agent. So make sure that the student's email in the application form is accurate because we will send it to that email address. Uh, we will send a login password and a password. So the student, like I said, will have seven days to complete that test. Sure. How soon we can get, uh, we will know the result. The student know the result. Uh, we say three to five days, three to five yeah. days. Uh, normally within three days, but to be safe, if they are busy sometimes, it will take up to five days, yeah. Sure. So this placement test is offered to all nationality or only for certain nationality? Yeah, I think uh, most of the agents here are Southeast Asia, right? Southeast Asia, yes. Uh, they are all for all, all the Southeast Asian countries that are available now, yes. Yeah. Uh, but for other countries, maybe just I can answer that like uh, because no, it's not open for all countries. I think it's just for Southeast Asia. I can answer quite confidently. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. And then the next question is: Do students have experience for MBA courses? Is it required for the experience to enroll in MBA? Mm, no need. No need. So students don't need to have specific uh, working experience. Yeah. Uh, there is one situation if your student right only has an advanced diploma, no bachelor degree equivalent to Australia, then they need work experience. Yeah, what I mean by that, if they only have a diploma back in their home country, but they have two years work experience, then they can use the diploma and work experience to get into our MBA. Okay, uh, if they already have a degree, they don't need to have work experience. Sure, yeah. Next question is from you, Kian. If they can share online teaching for IELTS courses, I'm not quite sure about these questions. Uh, but I think you can, can contact us to uh, for more information. I think uh, I'm not that clear about this question. Young, what do you think? Mm. Well, if you are talking about sample classes, that's what actually we are planning to do as well. Not necessary IELTS preparation, uh, but. Uh, I think a lot of questions like uh, with online studies is that oh, how, how does it work? Students don't understand, right? 
So we, Kaplan English and Kaplan Business School, we are actually compiling now a sample of our online class. Yeah, that means that we will hopefully put it on our YouTube channel soon so that students can look, oh, this is how an online class is. Yeah, maybe, I'm not sure whether that's the question, but yeah. uh, anyway, we are trying to do that as well because sometimes, like I said, people don't understand what is online studies with us uh, and uh, we want to give some examples, yeah. Okay, I think you can, if um, it doesn't answer your question, maybe you can uh, re-ask again the questions and then maybe explain a bit more. I read out the next question, Yong. Uh, may I ask if the student gets offer for July intake, paid and receive his COE, but the pandemic doesn't get better and travel registration is not lifted. Hence, the student is unable to obtain his or her student visa. Can he or she start his or her study online when the course commenced in July? Yeah, the short answer is yes. Okay, so uh, with student visa, right, it is, I don't know, maybe different country with the different embassies. I actually seen some visas granted despite there's a travel ban. Okay, uh, the past few weeks, I actually saw some visas granted offshore, which is funny. Uh, if they, even if they don't get their visa on time, they can because they're just studying online. They are not here in Australia, so they are not bound by the student visa restrictions. Yeah. So like I said, we've been teaching online for a long time. They can still enroll. They can still study. And when the travel ban is lifted, they get their student visa. They can just come to Australia and continue their course as normal. So uh, the short answer is yes, they can. Yeah. yeah. So even though there will be, if fingers crossed it will be better but even though uh, there will be, if there's still a travel ban students can still continue their studies commence okay. studies. Yeah. yeah so i think i suppose there's a two option for this situation rather student can defer the course the, i mean the defer the intakes or the student can study online and when then uh, by the time the travel uh, ban lifted and then student can come to australia yes yeah. Okay. So for, yeah, I want to give you some examples. So I have a few students got stuck in their country in March. Yeah. So what they're doing now is that they just study online. And uh, because a lot of them, like they're just at home anyway, they're not doing much at home. So they might as well just study. So they are studying online and hopefully when the travel ban is lifted, they will just come here and continue. Some even have visas already granted, but because of the travel restriction, they are stuck in their home country. So we do have students in that situation and for, and for uh, July, we can easily do that as well. Mm. Right, good. Next question is, do you offer any scholarship to South Asia students, particularly for Bangladesh students? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, so when you are here in our page, I still have the share screen on, right? So uh, South Asia Scholarship yes. is the one for South Asian students, obviously. Uh, and you, when, every time you click on it, you will see the conditions. The conditions are normally here at this side, the eligibility criteria. So just read through the conditions. And uh, it's very similar to the uh, Southeast Asian one. It's also 10%. It's uh, maybe slightly different. They need 70%, I think, yeah. So uh, every region has a different, slightly different type of uh, scholarship criteria. Yeah, so you can see here, Southeast Asia is Southeast Asia, uh, and South Asia is for all the South Asian students and students from different uh, areas as well. Mm. Okay, great, yeah, sure. Is there any access to learn online English course like IELTS by the student who are at home or offshore now? Uh, yes, yes. Actually, uh, Kaplan English has done the same thing with Kaplan Business School. Uh, they are starting, uh, actually started to offer uh, online courses for English classes as well. So they do teach uh, IELTS preparation uh, and EAP, which is most likely most uh, of your students want to do. Uh, online as well. So if you have any applications on that or any students just want to do English, uh, you can let me know or let uh, Johnny at Yes Education know that and uh, they can also, we can also process English applications. Yes. Okay, great. So next question is, is GMAT necessary for MBA student to get some scholarship as well? 
No, no, GMAT is not necessary as long as they complete their bachelor degrees uh, in, in in their home country. That's fine. It'll be another GMAT test. Yes. Oh, okay, so it's not it's not necessary. Yeah. Nope. Okay. Sure. Uh, we got next question. Is is there any other scholarship than the ten percent for Southeast Asia student? Uh, currently, yeah, like the the two for Southeast Asia is the high achievers and the Southeast Asia one. Yeah, so uh, we might have a bit more coming. Yeah, uh, but we will announce it to yes, and obviously yes, we'll share that information. Uh, but ultimately, yeah, these are the two: the thirty percent scholarship and the ten percent scholarship. The 10% scholarship, I think I dare to say like 90% of our students get it. Yeah, most of your students will get 10% off uh, because it's so accessible. Yeah, high achievers, obviously, if students, you have very, very good students, very good academic uh, type of students, then they get the 30% scholarship. And uh, if your students are from Indonesia, they get the 10 weeks free English. Uh, but for now, these are the main two scholarships. Uh, there is no campus specific scholarship yet. Uh, all the campus have the same scholarships. Yeah, uh, and like I said, all the campus teach the same courses, the same subjects. So it's actually quite easy to remember as well. You actually don't need to ask us, oh, is the Bachelor of Marketing offered in Adelaide? Uh, because all of the four campus, we teach all the courses. Okay. Please note that uh, the scholarship is not automatic. Uh, but you need to you still need to apply. So basically, uh, need to complete the scholarship form and then submit along with the application form. Yep, I'll show yep. you the form here. This is the scholarship details, and there's a short form here, which is one page. Uh, and uh, students also need to do. I'll make this bigger. Uh, students also need to do a short essay of how a Kaplan Business School degree will help you achieve success in the future. Okay, 500 words, no, not, not more than 500 words. So basically one and a half page, yeah. 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 So this is yeah. the scholarship form to complete together with the application form. Right, sure. Any other questions, guys? All right, if there's no other questions, so if you do have a question, please uh, let, uh, let us know. So you can contact one of our regional marketing managers in each regions uh, and then i think anything else from you young no yeah i think uh hopefully that answers all or some of your questions uh thank you for your time and thanks johnny and win to organizing this and uh yeah everyone just uh see it's it's a quite a challenging time i think for international education in, in general but i think uh together we can work together to see what we can do differently uh, like Johnny mentioned, like what are our materials that you need uh, in order to help us and or help you guys promote a differently if you need uh, more online information or more interactive kind of online material. We are open to ideas is what we are trying to say. Uh, I think what Kaplan Business School is doing and we will share with Yes Education very soon is different video testimonials about online studies, sample online classes, for example, we will also do some uh, specific course testimonials as well. So hopefully that will help all of us. And uh, before it go, everything goes back to normal and uh, everyone stay safe and stay healthy. Yep. All right. Thanks, Dr. Young. And okay. then uh, as, as usual, so we're going to send you this uh, PowerPoint presentation and also the recording as well. All right, guys. Uh, I will end this uh, online training. Stay safe and healthy. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Bye for now. Thanks.